Hi, I'm Jim Beach, and uh, today I'm going to do uh, a demo, and the demo, or I'm going to do the demo eventually, and it, it will be on attention to detail, which I think is so important to a good painting. Uh, as you can see, I've got a painting here that I started. We're going to go back and talk a little more about that, but first, you know, I'm sure you would like to know what I do. Well, I mean, what I use. I use this uh, particular palette because I can have a lot of colors in it. Uh, I don't use necessarily use them all, but when I do want them, I want them. I don't want to have to go to the tube and, and pull out the color just once for a one-time use. So I've decided that working with a bigger palette is the easier way to go. I have my water next to me, my brushes next to me, and my brushes I can't show you too well. I have probably way more brushes than I really need, but I do have enough that, again, if I need a brush, I want it. I don't want to have to go searching through tin cans and what else have you to find the brushes. Um, anyway, I'm going to show you some samples, I think, of uh, work relating to what we're going to do today, which is talking about attention to detail, which I think is very important no matter what kind of what style of painting you're doing. Um, I think that bad details reflect the fact that whoever the artist was didn't pay attention to what they were looking at necessarily. And I've seen many examples of that in uh, some of the shows that I've been into. This particular first one, shows and so these are all paintings i've done uh and this one by the way was in the national uh, accepted in the national watercolor show but it shows the detail of how a door or how a window frame is made what the muttons look like and how a double hung window should look uh, obviously the lower window is in further so these are not going to line up with the, the muttons they're not going to line up with the ones at the top they're going to be in a little bit I like to show more detail and include things like this window is obviously dirty and this one is no pain there, so it's clean. This one over here shows detail looking through and center of interest obviously is the window. This one shows again looking through, but it shows different ways of reflecting light. And I think that's important rather than just painting a black hole there. So we have this which is a bridge built by the Rome, or a, a tunnel or a gate built by the Romans in the city of Trier, Germany. And I think it's important to show the construction of that because anybody that's a historian that might look at it might want to know, you know, what it really was built like. And of course, obviously it is in, in disrepair because it's quite a few thousand years old. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that this was, was clear enough that they could make it out. This one, New York City. If you're doing any city scene, I think you want to do enough detail to convince people that it's a real city. I've included that in the lights. I've included it over here and leaving some of the office, but you'll notice the lights inside the office you even see. So there's enough detail to make it interesting, but not necessarily photographic. Same down here, loose water in the, in the road after a rain, cars and people makes it convincing that it is a city scene. This one is important in that it shows the stonework along here, which is important to show construction, how it was built with the, with the floorboards sitting on top of the stone, and then the vertical boards nailed into that. Again, it's a tight detail. And I show some inside structure too. To just paint that black would not do it justice. Again, a similar situation where we have the stone sitting on top of a header. The header is important because it supports the stone. Without it, you could get away with putting it in there. But also important is that by doing this, we can show how the light comes down and how it crosses and how it goes across and comes up the other side. And I think that's important to show depth. This is one that's a little looser, obviously, and it still has detail in it. We have detail in the roof. We have detail in the uh, the falling down uh, uh, door, the slider, and in the sideboards and, and an old window that's there and in the car down in the basement. And, and that's important because it, it 
paints an age thing. It gives you some references to where and what's going on. This one was done in Paris on a Paris scene. Again, anybody who would go to Paris would look at it. If it didn't have the chimney details and vent details that it has, people would say that's not Paris. The window detail. You'll notice too, when you're doing a window like these, it's important to make them square. We'll talk a little bit more about that a little later. Nothing worse than round windows. Anyway, today what we're going to talk about is trying to um, determine part of what we're going to do today is to try to determine what we're going to do with the tree in there. You'll notice in both the reference, which by the way is a is a photo in North Carolina. It did not have the fence in it. I photoshopped the fence in there because I felt it needed something in the front. It was just a little too bare. And this also gives the painting depth. So in my painting that I did do, I included the fence, but after I got it done, I realized I didn't particularly like it because the values are bad and so on and so forth. So uh, that I'm gonna change. In the meantime, I didn't like the fence, or I'm sorry, the, the tree, and I couldn't make up my mind. So I found a product that I think is really interesting. And it's, it's called Duralar. And it is marvelous. It's water-based medium. It's two-sided coated. It's reusable. It cuts cleanly. And you can use it over and over again. This is a piece of that. What I'm going to do with this, excuse me uh, for the tape, is I'm going to put it over this side over here very quickly. And then I'm going to go ahead and very quickly paint in what I think would be the tree, and I'm going to use a big brush for that. I'm going to use a 26 inch Lowell Cornell round. Lowell Cornell, by the way, it does not make brushes anymore. They sold the company out, uh, which is unfortunate. I like their brushes. So anyway, in order to do this, I'm going to need something that resembles a brown. So I'm going to get together and get some orange in there and a little bit of cobalt blue. Uh, and I'm going to get a brown. I don't, at this point, it's just for layout, it's not for color or, or detail or anything else. And uh, it's a matter of do I want the tree? And I'm thinking this one that I did, excuse me, this one had the tree blocking the house. And I'm not so sure I like that because I believe that if you're gonna show something like this, you have to show it over here as well. Otherwise you confuse the reader or the viewer. So I didn't like it from that point of view either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try to uh, put it next to the window. So I'm gonna bring it down in here like this, you know, and I'm not sure whether I wanna run it out the bottom. I don't think I do. So I'm just gonna bring that in. I'm, I am probably gonna to wanna to bring a branch or two up here and then eventually something over this to indicate the tree and break up that, that nice chimney. So I'm gonna do this here like this. Now I can go back in and add a little indigo into that, the brown here, make it a little darker because my light is obviously coming from the other side. So I'm gonna darken this up by bringing this down like this. I'm gonna go right up and I'm gonna have another branch probably going out there. And I'm going to just bring this down like this. Again, this is not a final painting and all it is is just an indication of, do I want the tree? So then I have that and I come down into the, what will eventually be grass. And then I can bring, a, a, I'm not sure, sure I want to, but I could bring like a stump of a, a limb there. And then maybe another one out of the center of the tree and across and down and out, something along that line. So there is probably what I'm gonna end up with as a tree. Now, obviously it's gonna have more uh, leaves and things like that. But what I can do now uh, is I can take that. And what I like about doing this on this particular film is I can now take it and move it around. I can even put it over here I can turn it this way. I can see, do I want the tree going out? Do I want it up further like this? Uh, or do I want it coming bleeding out of the out of the thing? Or do I want it over even further, like over here? 
I'm not sure about this at this time, so I'm going to take the the uh, this uh, mylar, and I'm going to use a. Uh, oh, I'm not ready. How bad of me. I'm going to take this and I'm going to wet it a little bit, just a little, and I'm going to take this off. I've decided probably what I'm going to do, looking at it overall, you know, um, it probably needs the tree and I probably will put it in, but I probably will run it a little straighter uh, over here like this and run it right about, I don't want it in the center of these two posts, so I'll probably run it about there. And I think by the time I get it done, it will add, and if I'm careful I, and, and show some depth in it, it'll, it'll add to the depth of the painting, which is what I want. So now I can go back, which is nice about this film. Look at this. I can just take all of that off of there, you know, without damaging it. It's just marvelous. So I can turn it over, get a little bit more water on the other end of it, and just continue to clean it off like this. And I won't go any further than that because it doesn't matter. And there you go. I've got it finished. Whoops. Got a little bit. There. It's done. Now, as far as the painting itself is concerned, uh, I think it's necessary at this point to talk about where we're going to start and, to, and what I'm going to try to do in this short demo. I will do an, a more elaborate final at the workshop which will be a one-day workshop for me and I will get into another painting which has far more detail in it. What I talked about earlier was windows like this. If you're going to have a window like that, let me get another quick piece of paper here. Just bear with me a second. There we go. And I have this artistico paper which is pretty good. What I mean by that is if you're gonna draw a window and you're gonna have you know, a pane of glass in it, the pane of glass in any house that I've ever seen is square. I have seen numerous paintings where people have decided and then just painted it. In fact, I'll do it just to show you what I mean. And I'll use a bigger brush. And I'll, I'll do it in black just so that it, you can get the full impact of what I'm talking about. What they'll do is they'll come in like this, oh, not wet enough, and they'll put the they'll put it in there like that, and they won't pay any attention to it, and they'll just sort of fill it in like so, you know. And in a very rough painting, it you may get away with that. I don't personally believe it. Uh, I, I think if you're gonna do a window, it's got to look, look square. So this has got to be square. That's got to be square. It's got to be flat across or in perspective, whichever works best and so on like this. And I think that's the way you do a window. Now, doors are similar. You can't have rounded, well, unless it's a rounded door. So let's go back now and talk about this other painting that I'm working on. And that's this one. You can see the windows there. I made sure this one's on a deliberate slant because the bottom of the sill is falling out, the bottom of the window. As you can see, there's the top, and that window's just about out. And this is broken glass. And this is a full pane, and it's reflecting. Again, it's doing the old uh, one, two, three to begin with, but also uh, doing uh, a... Uh, I can't think what it's called now, the rep repetition with variation. And that's what that is. You don't want to do the same thing over and over again. So all the windows are different. So anyway, today I want to concentrate on this area, which will eventually be the center of interest. You'll notice I've made it a little bigger. I've made the post a little bit straighter, but not a lot, just a little. And I've brought the fence up, down a little bit so that it is pointing in that general direction of that. The other thing that's important will be the details, which were not particularly well done on this older one. They're there and it was okay, but not as good as I'd like it to be. I've even gone so far as to paint in the boards. There is no such thing as a board, at least I don't think there is, that's that long. So 
that would be made up of boards. And in an older house, those endings or those joints where those boards join together, you would see because of age. And one board would weather more than another board and, and so on. And that also is an attention to detail thing, showing weathering, making sure that it looks like what you want it to look like. I did think another thing I didn't like about this is I didn't show enough variation in color, which you know I think is important in order to make it interesting. This inside here, we're going to use black, uh, and I'm probably going to use uh, uh, a number eight to start with. And I'm going to use indigo instead of black, maybe with a little black in it. And I don't want to see a lot of, of, of white in that area. So what I would do there, and there again, this is this corner of this door and it has to be sharp. So I'm going to put it in there sharp. Okay, and I'm going to just fill it in. And you'll have to pardon me, but I have to move a little when I do these things so that I'm lined up to, to feel comfortable doing it. So there we go. There's that first section of dark in there, okay? And I'm showing it. I And also while I'm doing these things, sometimes I will change them. I will alter them a little bit. So this, in this case, you know, I do not have the reference for the inside. I made it, I made it up. I cheated, I guess you'd call it. And I do have a board there that's sticking down, probably fell down from the ceiling. So I'll put that in there and then I'll put another one in over here. And I think what I'm gonna do is make very sure that I get this squared away over here. Cause after all, I just told you that's what you gotta do. So there we go, nice straight line. Now I do have a tendency to paint on the realistic side, not photographic, but realistic and there is a difference. So I wanna make sure that I have a good start on that. And I'm gonna come down here and I see something I did over here that I really like and I'm gonna to try to do that over here too. I'm not gonna go all the way with that one board. I'm gonna take part of it down like so and leave part of it off like it's broken. Okay, and then I'll bring it back in down here and just run it down into this other board here so that they connect, so that there's a linkage there. This wall over here, I'm going to make it, make it dark. And again, we want to make crisp their boards. They're not round, they're flat and straight. So I want to make sure that all of these detail is flat and straight. And so therefore, I'm going to make sure that I do it correctly. Is that the right word? See, I already made a mistake there. So I think what I'll do is just leave that for the moment. Okay, that's enough of that. The floor, I, uh, I like the light coming in. I don't know if that's in the picture or not. Maybe I'll bring this over here. I like the light coming in on the floor, but I really would like to see it a little softer. And I think the I'd like to see the the wood looking a little grayer. So what I'm gonna do is gray down that brown that I used earlier, which will work fine for this, and add a little bit of blue to it to give it a blue sort of a tint. And that would be cobalt blue that I'm adding. Yeah, that works out pretty good, I think. And I'm gonna do two parts of that. I'm gonna start with it being a little on the darker side on the on the inside so i'm just going to come across there like this i uh, see that's a little too dark so i want to lighten it up a bit so let's try that now test grip gotta have a test grip uh, that'll lighten up i think so we'll just bring that across and down there is another piece of wood there so this is in the background. It can be a little darker. And I want it to run right out the side. And I still have my light coming from on the, over here on this side. So therefore I want to make this, and I'm going to make it a little deeper this time. I don't want to get you into the picture. And I'm going to bring it back 
a ways and I had a straight line there and I'm going to make it an angular, more angular line because it's a wall in the back of the house and I want to make sure that that comes across. Now I'm going to take and lighten this up a little bit more. Almost white. Well, probably a number two gray. But I'm going to bring this in here like this and soften that whole thing up a little bit. Now I'm going to deliberately go back in here and go over that a little bit for starters. And this comes up to the door sill. which by the way is missing. I forgot to draw it in there. So I will do that later. Now I do want a little bit more dark back in here. So I'm going to take this and just dab dabble some color in there. So now we have that just to, to give it a little bit of darkness. And I think that'll work pretty good. I can just trim that up a little bit. There, now that door is nicely done. Now I can't do much with that until it's dry. And I'm gonna use my dryer, my blower to, uh, to, to dry it if I can. Oh, not quite. Okay, that'll do for the moment. Let's talk about what I want to see through there. Well, as you can see in this, I have something back there. What I have back there, that's another reason I didn't like this painting. This doesn't match this. It sort of does. But back there, I don't want to have this. It's the back of the house, so they had a lawn back there. I want a bright color back there. And the reason I do is I want to make sure. So I'm going to mix a little aureolin. Uh, with a little bit of um, Prussian blue and that'll give give me uh, a nice green and I want a light green in there and I don't want it to be too bright but I want it to be bright enough that it it stands out so and I'm probably going to repeat that that color someplace else so I've got a straight line drawn there as a, for instance, so I'm going to make this, see, yeah, it's not even light enough. I think it could be a little lighter than that even. So let's go back in and do this, mix it up a little bit more. You know, it's important that that be a bright spot in there. And again, boards are there and I want to make sure that the boards are indicated as straight boards because they are so this is a little finicky but it's important so there you go okay we have the uh basics of that done i overdid it here this was I have to drag that out of there a little okay so that gives us the lawn area that i was talking about now i can go to a little darker green but again, I don't want it to be, and I, I don't want it to be too dark, but I want it to also blend with the other yellow, that yellow green that I have there so that there's a transition going back. And again, we're dealing with these boards and we're gonna keep them straight. And I'm just gonna go back a little bit with this as a center of interest and a little bit over here. I'm not sure what I was going to do in there, but I think I had another piece of wood in there. So I'm going to sort of, it's a shame these old houses in uh, North Carolina, of which there are a lot of antebellum homes there are really quite nice. Now I'm going to make this a little like it's rough. Now back in there, I'm going to wait to do that 
until I do this because I'm not 100% sure how I want to treat that. However, I do have a section of that lawn that I did not do. So I'll go back and do that now because that's really important. And that's this section and this section in here. Okay, so this needs to be Okay, now I gotta let that dry. I'm not gonna blow it dry. And the, except for the verticals in that, which would be the last thing I'll do in the painting, because I wanna establish the values around the door first. So we've got that done. Let's try doing something a little different here. Let's try doing a window. We'll do this window here. And the reason for that is it's partially in shade. As you can see, I've drawn a line. These lines, by the way, are a little heavier than they might, I would normally put them in, but it's so that you guys can see it and, and relate to where, what I'm doing at that area. So I'm gonna start with the top. And in this case, I have the dark in there. Now, I, originally I had it totally dark. I don't want it to be totally work, dark. So I'm gonna come back in with again, a little indigo. And my reason for that is I like indigo is it's, it's, it indicates depth to me. And if I put that in there and I'll show you when I get it done now, uh, why I like it. But anyway, one thing about glass is very seldom do you get round breaks in glass. So if you're going to put glass in, you want to have sharp edges again, very important. And you know, you want to put it in, and in this case, I'm going to come all the way down to that line, but I'm going to vary it in the background a little bit. I'm going to throw in a little bit of this brown in there. It may or may not show up too well. Let's, let's see. Like you're looking in the window, okay? And who knows what the wallpaper was back then, but I don't want it to be totally dark again being very careful of these verticals in the window the mitten i think they're called muttons muttons or mittens and i'm not sure not mittens mittens so there's a little bit of value change in there not a lot but a little bit and that's good now i still want it to be darker than the rest of the window down below because that's what it's going to be I want it to be dark, I'm sorry, than down below because that's going to be in the light. So, and, you know, it because it's, well, I'm going to backtrack on that. It won't be light because it's inside. So we'll just continue with this. Sorry about that. Got confused. Let's continue down with this window. And we'll just add it in there. What I will do though, you'll see in a minute, is do a little lifting to pull some detail out that might interest whoever's viewing the painting. So there is that. Now I have two choices. I can take this and blot that a little bit, which I think I might, just a little bit. There, now I can go back in with my ultra, or my indigo in there and I can show a door frame in there and in this case I'm using dry on damp or wet to get that in there so there it is okay now I'm going to do a little lifting too two areas I'm going to lift I have what I call my handy dandy lifting brush, which is just an old, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> oh well, whatever the name is, it's worn off. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna very, very carefully lift back out of this cross mitten because I went over it there. Once it's clean, I can just blot it and that's fine. The other thing I'm gonna do is lighten this up in here, 
just a little bit so that it looks like there's light in through the door there. And I might even make it a little bit lighter in that area. And having done that, I can get away from it. So there's pain number one. That didn't sound good, did it? Pane number two over there is just the plain uh, glass is, is, is gone type of thing. So what I really should do is change it up because I don't want to carry this door and get too much away from this area here or take away from this area because that's where I want my center of interest more. So what I'm going to do with this window is I'm going to put a little dark green in there and I'm going to do that with Prussian blue again and I'm going to use that and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of brown to make it sort of a, a dirty color and I'm going to do that whole window in that color that whole pane of glass and you'll notice it's sort of more or less uh, got some color in it but not much now I can go back in put some color in it down at the bottom and I'm going to show you how I re do reflections in glass I have to do this window over here again the top I'm going to be very careful around this po newel post no, it's not a newel post but the fence post That corner wasn't round. It's now it is squared off. Now I can take the same color that I was using. And put it over here on this window pane. But I'm going to make it a little lighter. Because I want it to look like it's more glass. And in order to match up with the other one, I'm going to take this area up in here and lighten it a little there so that it looks like it's coming down or that it's in the light area there. Okay. So there, now that, now we have two windows, two window panes done. The ones down below, I want, definitely want dark, and the reason I want them dark is because I have my my fence uh, that's going to work up against it, so I want to make sure that it's, uh, that it's, uh, stands out. And I see that I did not erase something that I should have, so I'm going to use my handy dandy little electric eraser, because this is the top of each one of those boards and I carried this too far I, er I erased the wrong one so an electric eraser by the way is nice if you use it right it won't hurt the paper but boy is it fast and it does a much better job I'm going to brush away all of that leftover nonsense from that now that's done so okay I want this to be darker down there so what I'm going to do with that I am going to transition this top one down below. And the reason I'm transitioning it is I want that whole thing to look open. So I'm going to go back into here and I'm going to take this and I'm going to start with it being I'm sure there are some people that would say, why didn't you do that in the first place? And you know what? They're right. Because I told you, I sometimes change things as I go. And this is a good example of that. Now down near the bottom, I can get dark, which is what I want. But I still want it to be in the brownish sort of range. So I can begin doing this. And I have the fence or the gate or the window, sorry, door frame coming down. 
which is good. And in this case, I'm going to just bring this right on down and this right on down and over. Uh, I don't think I'll bring it over. Now I have to go back in there and put some light color in there on this side. And I want it to bleed a little so it will One of the other ways, if you're really nervous about detail, what you can do is use either uh, masking fluid on these verticals or these thin window frames or tape, which I can use a lot of uh, painter's tape. Now in this case, I went over that line. So while it's still moist, I'll use my handy dandy little scrubber and get that color out of there. I don't want it in there. So that's gone. I don't have to worry about it. However, this side over here, I'm thinking maybe I'm going to leave this one open. So it's going to be a continuation of the color we were using. And I'm just going to bring that in here like this. You know what I like? I see something I like. I like this fact that this door frame uh, is, I like to show it all the way down. So there, this is darker. And I need to get a little bit more dark in there, down over here. I want that fence post to come out, remember? So what I'm gonna do is change things up a little. You know, I'm gonna just fake it. That's what I call it. And I'm gonna make it look like that window piece is missing, which is really important because I think it adds interest. So there, that's the window done. It, well, it's not quite done. I have to wait for it a little bit to dry because I, well, maybe not don't. If I go back in here and get some of this indigo again and, bl and black and come back down on the door frame here a little bit like this straight down there, that's got it. And then a little bit up here. And I think what I'm gonna do is change it. I had it light in there and I'm gonna make it dark in there. I think it's another room. I think it makes it more interesting. So then I can bring this down and it works better because now I have my hole and I'm gonna just knock that window out of there. That mitten. and darken this whole area down. And come across there like that to give it a form. Okay. There, so that window's done. This now is done as far as I'm gonna go but I am gonna add in some of the boards inside and I have them silhouetted in black, which I don't wanna do. So what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of uh, burnt orange to that and make them, un I don't want them standing out, especially the ones coming down from the ceiling. And then those old in the houses, they had wood ceilings. So I'm just going to make that come down like that. And I'm going to bring this one across and down. 
And this one I'm going to make a little longer to add interest to it. And show it as broken. Okay, so that's done. And then this one here, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to add a little color to it. Just a little bit, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue, just to make it a blue gray, more on the blue side. And I'm going to bring that down from this, this board here. And only going to happen if I wet it enough. So I'm going to bring that down. And I'm going to bring this side down. to there. I was going to go, well I will, I have a little erasing to do I can see. So before I go too far I better get rid of that. It's called a mistake. And it's right in there. I went and filled that in and I shouldn't have. So I'm going to take it out of there. And if I'm careful I'll be able to get enough of it out of there that when the time comes I can go ahead and I'll just blot it out and dry it. Uh, I can go ahead and, and finish that after it dries up a little bit. When I get a line that is annoys me, which happens like you're right in this area, see how I painted over the board a little bit too much, then I'll just take my little handy dandy scrubber and go back in. Now, yeah, it leaves a little bit of color there, but who the hell cares? I'm gonna paint that anyway. So, I'm just gonna take this and I think maybe I'm going to make these dark back here and come to light as they come forward, which will add dimension to it. So, in this case, I'm gonna go back to my burnt umber and put them in there. now. What I can do, a little bit of, uh, um, well, let's try it. A little bit of, I don't wet what I'm gonna do. here, I'll use a little color in the water to wet it, but I'm gonna wet it first. Both of them. And then I can go back in with my burnt umber a little bit up in this area and then drag it down which is uh, what I'm going to do now it has to be a little darker because it's up against that that green so there I, that's what I wanted a little bit darker and a little white edge because there's light coming in the house now I can take that and add a little bit of water to it and finish it out, whoops, a little too much water, and finish it out down below here. And I'll do the same over here. Now we have a nice little gradation of color. Probably could still use a little bit more color in the back here. So I'll go back in and add it in there. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Now the now the light from the front door is shining on it and making it look more natural. A little white there I want to get rid of. And bring it on down. Okay, now we have this one going across this way. And I think that's going to be a fun thing because I can show that as uh, being a little darker yet. So I'll just go, because it's coming from the other side. So what I'll do with that is I will put that in. You know what, I think I'm gonna do I'm going to run it across this one. And I'm going to run it across 
here. Just a touch. Or a little bit of floor, whatever it is. I need it in there anyway. Okay, it's done. So, the, for the, except for this green area or whatever it's gonna be in the background, that door frame is, is open. I do see one little area there that I forgot, which is another piece of wood I had in here. All these, you say, well, why are you doing that? Well, all of these little things that I'm doing add, hopefully, dimension to it. Now, to add even more dimension, I'm going to put a little bit of black under this and a little bit of black under that to make it look like it's lifted. Now, like it's over top of the other one that's there. And I'm also going to take a little bit of this gray and I'm gonna just run a little bit of it across the floor like that. So it almost looks like a shadow. It won't be very much strong, but it's there. And the same with this one here by the door. And I'm just gonna run that back as sort of an angle. And you know, it adds a little bit more interest to it. And the one that's back there will do the same thing with that. Now we have a whole bunch of nothing going on there if the building's falling down. It was a lovely home in its day. Farmhouse. Probably a tobacco farmer, being it was in the flatlands, the lowlands as they call it, in uh, North Carolina. So there you go. We've gotten that far done. Those are two important elements. The other one that will be important, or obviously the other windows will be nice. You'll notice though, I want to, the amount of interest in these, this is too much in this one, but in these to be less uh, and, and be stronger, a little weaker and a little weaker. And the reason is I want to keep the eye in this area around the windows. And it's going to be very important when I get to it to make sure that my shadows, which I didn't draw in here, are uh, very strong. And they're strong here, but they're not correct. So I have to do that. And, uh, you know, the one up top is okay. You'll notice too, the other thing I did is I added more to the chimney to add interest. And I added the top of the house in, which I felt it needed. Just cutting it off like that, I think did more harm than good. I'll be able to really accent this whole side of the house by getting this tree done in here, which will be a dark, really dark color um because my light's coming from over here and it, it'll just set that out and there'll be more white in this area and it'll graduate gra grade eight to a little darker <coughs> excuse me <coughs> a little darker color over on this end so that the, again the emphasis will be in here the same will happen with the roof you know i started to do that this will have uh, uh be about the same as it is here and maybe a little bit darker. I've left this out of there because I don't want it to be a center of interest or bring the eye to it necessarily. So I left it out of the, the final drawing. And I've made this porch that's here. I made it a little smaller. I brought it in tighter and tightened up the, uh, the, the supports for it. And the reason is, again, I didn't, I felt it was just taking my eye right out of the picture was too strong, which is another reason why I probably will put my, my, uh, my tree back in there. But uh, I will be very careful when I do the tree um, so that it doesn't take away from the rest of it, but adds to the painting. Parts of this tree are all right. This vine growing up the tree doesn't work as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, I could make it work by using uh, some uh, masking fluid and so on and, and spotting some of the, the leaves out. But then it would bring too much attention to it. And I noticed that when I was doing this painting and that's why I sort of uh, knocked it back and knocked it back to the point where it's bad. It's just not well done. So anyway, 
So now we can carry on. And the next thing I would do probably on this would be to do all of the windows and get those done first before going on because that will determine what the value of the siding will be. Now, mostly I tell my students, don't put in every board. But in this case, I think the wood add, and the boards add texture to it and are uh, add interest to the whole thing. And the same with the roof. I think this is one of those rare paintings where you need that attention to detail in order to make it work. Uh, I will not put in this line, electric line in there. That's another thing I'm gonna leave out. And I think it'll make the painting better. So at this point, I'm gonna call it a day.